That's Ephesians chapter 14, I mean, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I'll be reading from the King James. You may have the NIV, New International Version, or the ESV, English Standard Version, or the NASB, New American Standard Bible. But I'm reading from the King James. And it reads, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom, all, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend or understand with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ that passes all understanding, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think, according to the power which worketh in us, to him be glory. In the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, amen. You may be seated. Once again, in, in these verses, uh, we see then uh, the tenderness of the apostle exposed through prayer. Not only do we see the, the, tenderness, of, the tenderness of the apostle exposed through prayer, but, but we also see in these verses, we see the dependency of the apostle exposed through prayer. He's praying to the only one that's able to keep him from falling. He's praying to the only one that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all he can ask or think. And so you see then, he's dependent upon this great God. I wonder if I were to stop here and just finish the sermon now, how many of you are dependent upon this great God? How many of you truly are dependent upon Jesus Christ for everything that you have and everything that you are and everything that you hope to be? The Apostle Paul is not like us. He understands that the only way he can achieve and be anything is through the power of God. And so he prays out of dependency and he's asking God to do something for the Ephesian church that they could not do for themselves. And I'm praying to God for all of us that God will meet our needs and do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Some of you are in trouble. You can't get yourself out. You need to be dependent upon God. Some of you got some sicknesses and some ailments that nobody can heal but God. Some of you have been going from trial and tribulation and trial and tribulation, and the only one that can speak through your circumstances is God. You tried your friends, you tried the doctor, you tried the lawyers, you tried the pastor, you tried the deacons, you tried the person sitting beside you, but the only one that can truly meet you where you are and then have the power to change your circumstance is Jesus. And so I'm telling you right now, if you are dependent upon man, you're going to fall and you're going to fall hard. But if you reach up and say, Lord Jesus, you are my dependency. You are the one that I'm leaning upon. And if I lean upon the word of God and the son of God and the spirit of God and the power of God, then let me tell you, I will never fall because he's able to keep me from falling. I'm tired already. <laughs> Listen to Max Lakota, Lakato, uh quote on prayer. He said, our prayers may be awkward. Our attempts may be feeble, feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. Let me give you one more. Martin Luther said, the great reformer says, to be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. All right. My brother says every time you take a breath, somebody ought to be praying because somebody needs Jesus. 
Somebody ought to be praying. Every little step I make, I'm not talking about new addition, but every little step I make, I ought to be praying that God will hear me because I'm totally dependent upon the power and the mercy and the grace and the grandeur of God. So, the purpose then of this sermon today is powerful family prayer part two. We're going to look at verse 16 only. Well, we'll bring some other verses, but I want you to concentrate on verse 16. And I want you to see that the Apostle Paul, as he's writing from prison, Mm -hmm. you're talking about being dependent upon God. Mm -hmm. He's in prison and he can't get himself out. Some of you are in prison in the mind and you can't get out. Some of you have some relationships, you're not married, you depend upon somebody, and guess what? You can't get out. You want to get out, but somehow you always go back to that joker, you always go back to that joker. You need to get out, but you can't get out, and the only way you can get out is if God will reach down and open up a door and let you out. Yes, sir. Relationship imprisonment. Mind imprisonment. We, we, some of us own a job, we're in prison in a job, and God has told you, take this job over here. And you said, no, Lord, they pay me more over here. That's why you don't have any peace. If you take the God job over there, you will have peace. And when you trust God, he'll make you and elevate you and put you right where he wants you to be. We have to be dependent upon God. So Paul writes this letter to the Ephesians, and in circular, circular letter, he writes this letter in prison. At the same time he was in prison, he wrote the Philippians. He wrote the Colossians. He wrote Philemon. He wrote those letters, and he wrote it about in AD 55, AD 57, all the way to AD 61. That's the stretch. That's the time frame. Yes, he, he's writing. He's dependent. Yes, sir. He's exposed. He has nothing to offer anybody but prayer and his heart. That ought to be some of us today, right? We ought to be offering people prayer and our hearts. Hey, I don't have a lot of money, but I'm praying for you. I don't have a lot of money, but I'm really cheering for you. I'm hoping that God comes through for you because if God comes through for you, he can come through for me. Some of us only pray for ourselves. And that's why God doesn't come through when you want them to come through. But if you would pray for somebody else besides yourself and then be happy when God blesses them because they are dependent upon God and you are dependent upon God and if you're happy, guess what God would do? He'll bless you. Some of you are looking for a man and you don't have a man and that sister who was dependent upon God for a very, very long time, God has blessed her with a good man and the reason why you can't get a good man or a good woman because you're begrudging them because God has blessed them. If you would just thank God for them, God might open up the windows of heaven and bless you with somebody real good. Y'all said, Pastor, you must have had a good time over there at Price's Church. And so he, in his prayer, he, he prays for inner growth, but, but, but I want you to see in, in this prayer as we consider this one point, he prays for inner strength. He prays for inner strength, and, and, he, and, and, and as we look at this prayer of inner strength, there's three subpoints. He prays for inner strength. There's the plea for inner strength. Mm-hmm. There's the place of inner strength, and there's the purpose for inner strength. The Apostle Paul starts off in verse uh, 14. He says, for this cause. For this cause, you, you Gentiles, you Gentiles and Jews, you make up the body of Christ for this cause. I don't care who's in here. You can be white. You can be black. You can be Hispanic. You can be whatever. We all make up the body of Christ. And the Apostle Paul is praying for Jew and Gentile. It doesn't matter. You can be Filipino. You can be Chinese. You can be Japanese. You can be whatever you wanted to be. But we all, if we believe in Jesus, make up the body of Christ. And I said it before as I move on. Some of you Baptists are going to think you're the only people that can get into heaven. And when you get into heaven, you're going to see Methodists. You're going to see Presbyterian. You're going to see some other people in heaven besides you. And you're going to wonder, are you in heaven? You might be somewhere else, huh? But 
he bows his knees unto the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he tells us that all the families in heaven and earth, but he's really talking about believers in Christ. He says, you who believe, no matter who you are, you make up the family of God in Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, he said he names you. He owns you. You don't own yourself. Too many times we think we own ourselves. That's why we can't live for God because we think we own everything. You don't own anything. The breath that you breathe comes from God. The house that you live in comes from God. The car that you drive comes from God. Everything that you have comes from God. You are dependent totally upon God. I know you have your faculties. I know you can think, but if God was to take your breath away from you, that's it. No more house. No more car. No more partying. No more shouting. No more nothing. Your breath is gone because God has taken it away because everything in this world belongs to God. The cattle on a thousand hills. Matter of fact, Psalm 24 one says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And the world, and they that dwell therein. They, all of us. Listen, I know, I know it's tight, but it's right. I know you don't want to say that somebody own you. I'm, I'm free. Nobody own me. I'm my own woman, my own man. I can do what I want to do. Really? If the speed limit says 25 and you drive 85, I bet you'll get a ticket. And you're going to pay the man. You either pay the man his money. Or you pay the man your time, but one way you're going to pay the man. So if you can pay the natural man, then why can't you be dependent upon the supernatural man to meet all of your needs? So Paul prays. And the first thing he prays for, he prays for inner strength. Look what he said in verse 16, that God will grant you. He says that God will grant you. He prays for inner strength that God will grant you. Or the word means that God will give you. That God will give you what you need. So he prays for inner strength that God will grant you or give you according to. So the first thing he does is he prays for inner strength. And let's look at then the plea for inner strength. Look, that God would grant you according to his riches and glory. See, the plea for inner strength is based upon two things. Number one, it's based upon God's endless riches and glory. Isn't it good to know that God has endless riches and glory? Now, isn't it good to know that whatever you need, God can supply it? This is not the only time that the Apostle Paul prays this way. In Philippians 4.19, he says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So his prayer for inner street, the plea, is based upon God's endless riches. What you mean? Whatever you need. Peace, God has it. Power, God has it. Strength, God has it. Whatever you need, God has an endless supply of it. And I don't know why, listen to me, I don't know why people don't tithe. Let me say it on this side. I don't know why people don't tithe. Because if God in the supply of riches and he can meet those needs according to his riches in glory then you ought to be willing to trust God with all that you have Paul says I'm praying for inner strength and my plea is based upon God's endless riches and glory. He says, just when you think God runs out, runs out, he gives you more power. Just when you think God runs out, he gives you more peace. Just when you think God can't come through, he opens another door and another door and another door. Just when you think you couldn't make it, God comes through like a flood, sweeps you up, sets your feet on solid ground. I want you to know that God has an endless supply according to his riches in glory. Everything that God does for you is because of his riches in glory and he does it through one person and that's Jesus Christ. And then he says not only based upon God's in his riches and glory but it's based upon the eternal power of the Holy Spirit that God would grant you according to his riches and glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit. 
God knows that we need to be strengthened with might by the Spirit. And so God then, the Holy Spirit, he comes in and gives us power. He helps us overcome. People are always talking about some people, even in the church. Now, how can you overcome that? The Spirit of God, he aids you. He helps you. He strengthens you. He gives you what you need to overcome. See, that's why a lot of times when people, you think they're talking about you, they're really not talking about you. You ever thought that? They, they look at you and start laughing. You say, they're talking about me. They could care less about you. You have a problem with you. You have a problem with your self-esteem. You think somebody talking about you. They may be talking about how the Cowboys lost, how the Spurs are losing, how, how the, the Lakers are losing, how everybody losing except for Golden State. They may be talking about all that, how the ACC won the national championship. It wasn't North Carolina, but it was the ACC. They may be talking about that, not the SEC, not the Big 12, not the Big 10, but the ACC. Oh, I'm sorry. And, and what you need... What you need is strength, right? You need power to overcome yourself sometime because sometimes self gets in the way and it hinders us from doing and being whom God has called us to be. It's not about you. It's not about yourself. It's always about Jesus, what he can do in and through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so he prays for the what? The eternal power of the Holy Spirit. It's based upon that. That's what Paul is saying. He says, listen, when time get hard, know that the Spirit, the Comforter is there. He's a paraclete. He comes to aid you alongside you to make, help you make it over the tough times. Have you ever been through tough times? On this side, have you ever been through tough times? Man, the only way you got to, you thought you got yourself through. But it was the Spirit of God who resides on the inside. He gave you might because it's not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He gave you power and you were able to come through that thing. And it looks like you was able to float over that thing, didn't it? Because God gave you power in the inner man. Powerful family prayer. Paul bows his knees and he prays for inner strength. And then you see the plea. But what about the place? Mm -hmm. That God would grant you, according to his riches and glory, to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. You see where he says it takes place at? He's not talking about the outer man. Why isn't he talking about the outer man? It's dying. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. You ought to turn to it. It's a great verse. Sometimes I move fast to the scriptures, but I want you to see this verse. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. He says, I told you I'm going to go slow then. I have it memorized, but I'm, I'm going to read it with y'all so I can go slow. 2 Corinthians 4, 16. He says, for which cause we faint not. But though the outward man is what? Perishing. But the inward man is doing what? Being renewed day by day. In other words, uh, the, the Apostle Paul knows that the outward man is dying. But the inward man needs to be strengthened. So he prays for strength in the inner man. In other words, my soul needs to be fed the truth of God's word. And the more of the truth I get into me, the more those lies I can get out of me. The more of the truth I get into me, the more that cheating I can get out of me. The more of the truth I can get into me, the more that stealing I can get out of me. I'm not saying I'm lying. I'm not saying I'm cheating. I'm not saying I'm stealing. But I'm just telling the truth. The more we get God's word in us, the more we can get some of us out of us. Some of us, our worst problem is us. Us is. And so he, he prays for strength in the inner man. It's not only the inner man, but it's the material part of us that makes us us. In other words, it's my emotions, my intellect, my will. That's where it is. It's called the heart. It's called the soul. It's the material man. He says, if you're strengthened there, 
then you won't have to say, why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? He said, but have what? Have hope in God. So he said, listen, Lord, these people need to be strengthened right here because the pain they're feeling is right here. They're talking about them. they here, but the pain is coming from here on the inside. Somebody needs to be strengthened with power in the inner man so that you can overcome the outer things of life. You're going through some outer things in life. You're going through some difficulties in life. And if you don't have a strong disposition about yourself, you will be overtaken with these things that belong to the world. That's why some of us can't get out of debt. Because every time we see, we won't. Can't afford it, but we won't. And we have no strength in the inner man. And the outer part of us always takes over. And we grab and we buy, and we grab, and we buy, and then we say, oh, how am I going to pay for it? And you don't have enough money at the end of the month. It's all gone. Why? We've given into the impulses of feelings that are associated with the dying man. But we need to give into the, the, what? The, the guidance of the inner man that's being strengthened through the power of the Holy Spirit. And if you give in to those impulses, you can overcome. You can be who God has called you to be. You can live well. You can love well. You can forgive well. You can pray well. You can do all that God would have you to do well. But what you have to do is pray that God will strengthen you in the inner man or the part of me that makes me me. And that's the material part that you don't see. Y'all still don't believe me, do you? Let me, let me finish this up right quick. Let me tell you then. How about this? When, when, when in Genesis, when God created Adam, I said it yesterday, he was made from the dust, not the dirt, not the dirt, but the dust of the ground. He was a shell and God breathed into Adam and then Adam became a living soul, not until God breathed into him. So when I say the inner man or the immaterial part of me that you don't see, it's that breath, it's that life. That's where all the thinking takes place. That's why Jesus said, as a man thinketh, so is he. That's why you, you, you think in here and you curse. Some of y'all still curse. The, the, the Bible says shame the devil. The Bible doesn't say that, but old people say shame the devil. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Some of you still curse. Some of us, if we get in a tight jam, we'll still lie. Some of us, if we get in a tight jam, I'm on this side of the house. Some of us are still cheat too. And if you go back to the country and you get on somebody's nerve and move in the wrong way, someone will still pull out their knife and cut you too. In other words, some of you will fight at a drop of a dime. Because there's no strength in the inner man. But once you have strength in the inner man, you know how you fight? You fight on your knees. That's how you fight. You fight on your knees. And that's what he's talking about, praying for strength in the man. So then we see uh, not only the plea for inner strength, but the places in the man. But what is the purpose? What is the purpose for inner strength? Here it is. There's three things. Quickly, the purpose is, number one, to overcome weaknesses that beset us. Every person has some weaknesses. I don't care how strong you are. There's something that's weak about you. Somebody may be a strong Bible teacher, and yet they can't live it. Somebody may be a strong money maker, and yet they can't give it. There's some weaknesses about us. And if you look around, some of you are looking at me with two eyes now. Four eyes and not two. Because your eyes have become weak over time. I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Because some of y'all looking at me, they may be shades, but you know their glasses. And you're looking at me. Some of you are talking to me, and the things that you've been chewing with lately don't belong to you. There's some things that you're using that's walking with you that don't belong to you. But guess, that, that means that we are beset, what? With weaknesses. We, we, we are breaking down. We are going down. But it's good to know that while I'm going down, I'm coming up. I'm going down, but I'm, I'm coming up because God is doing a work on the inside of me. So he prays for strengthening the man and the purpose to overcome 
overcome weaknesses. Some of us can't speak well, but God helps us overcome. Some of us can't write well, but God helps us overcome. Some of us can't put all the sins together when we're preaching, but it's okay because God helps us overcome in some way or how you get it when we're preaching. God press it in your mind and you get it and then you're growing in Christ because God helps our weaknesses. Number one, he prays the purpose for inner strength is to what? Overcome weaknesses that beset us. What about overcoming the world that beguiles us? The world deceives us through the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. If you are in a relationship, I'm not saying anything bad, but I'm just saying, and you're not married, and y'all living in the same household, and sleep in the same bed, the world is deceiving you. I'll leave that alone. If, if you... The world, it deceives us. You know why? Because the world wants to destroy us. I'm not talking about the cosmon. I'm not talking about the cosmizo or the cosmos. I'm talking about this world system. It's designed to take us down with it. It is dying, and the world wants to use the lust of the eyes to deceive us into thinking that everything is good, that's good for us is good to us. It's not. Or good to us is good for us. You know how it is. That doctor told you don't eat pork. Because you got high blood pressure. Girl, I got to have that pork. Man, you know them pork chops taste so good. And, that bake. and guess what happens? I, I'm, I'm serious though, guess what happens? We eat it and then we find ourselves in the hospital because we have high blood pressure. It's good to us, but it's not good for us. This is not alcohol. This is Perrier, whatever it is. I want y'all to see that because some people are looking at me kind of crazy. But, but there's some things in our life that, that are really not good for us, and, and they deceive us. That man, that woman, that, that, that cart, whatever, it deceives us, and we think it's good for us, and at the end of the day, it destroys us. The world is deceiving us into thinking that we have to have everything that we see. Y'all mad at me today, huh? Because y'all love this world, don't you? I like it. I'm thankful to be in it, but I don't love it. Because it's passing away with all the forms of it. So, so he, he prays for inner strength to overcome. To overcome what? To, to, to overcome not only uh, the world that beguiles us and weaknesses that beset us, but weariness that burdens us. Doesn't weariness burden us? Man, there's sometimes you've been putting a lot of effort and time into things, and, and now you're wearied and you're being burdened. You got some children that just don't want to do right. You got a wife or a husband that sometimes don't want to act right. People on the job are messing with you. Man, the IRS don't want to give us our big tax refund anymore. Man, we're just wearied. Man, we're wearied at church. We're wearied on the job. We're wearied at home. The kids are wearied in school. Now I got to cook dinner. Now he's talking about why is the dinner not on? And I'm telling him, don't you see? I'm taking these kids from this sporting event to that sporting event. Don't you see I'm arning your clothes? Don't you see I'm dealing with you and you wear me out? And all he can say is, I've been working. Amen. And I what? We're weary with burdens. But Jesus gives the great invitation in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29 and 30. Come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am weak, meek, and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest into your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, when you get weary, bring your burdens to me. Cast your burdens upon me. I care for you. But sometimes we get weary. And Paul says we need inner strength to overcome the weariness and the burdens of it. Some burdens are heavy and you can't carry them by yourself. Your mother or sister or brother or somebody died and now you've been weighed down with grief. You need to talk to somebody who can tell you, I've been through it. But God is able, I tell you, to bring you through. So, he prays for inner strength. That's the plea for inner strength. It's based upon those two things. God's in his riches and glory. The eternal power of the Holy Spirit. He prays for, uh, there's a place where he prays for inner strength. That's the inner man. That's the material man. Me, that makes me me. And then, lastly, we see 
Do y'all know what it is? The purpose. To overcome, right? To overcome weaknesses. To overcome the world. To overcome weariness. Isn't it like the writer in the, God, the Bible to give us stuff that we need? Job was burdened down, wasn't he? But Job said in Job 23, 6, would he plead against me with his great, great power? But no, he would put strength in me. Isn't like the Bible that when we are fighting against our Red Seas, that God will come through? Moses spoke to God, and God told Moses, hold out your hand, and while I'll part the Red Sea, and you can walk over on dry land. Some of us are dealing with our Red Seas, but God will put strength in us to help us come over on dry land. Isn't like God to give us what we need? In Psalm 27, 14, David says, but they that wait upon the Lord, wait on the Lord, be a good person. He shall strengthen thine heart. That's Psalm 27, 14. We, we need it, don't we? We need God to strengthen our heart. But isn't like God to give us what we need? The apostle Paul says in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But oh, isn't like God. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30, that's the verse we just quoted. But they, but they, but they, but they, who are the they? All of those that believe in Jesus Christ, but they. On this side, you are the day. In here, you are the day. Over here, you are the day. But they, that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I'm telling you, God will put strength in you, and you can what? Have eagles, eagles' wings, and you can overcome some things in life. But they that wait upon the Lord, not waiting upon anybody, you got to wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Look at me. I'm going through some things, but I'm flying. I got my eagle wings on. God is renewing my strength. I'm mounting up now. I'm getting ready to go. Can't you see me? I'm taking off Why? God gives me strength when I need strength. God puts it in me. I can run and not be weary. I can walk and not faint. Because they that wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be a good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. If you wait, he'll bring you through. No matter what you're going through, God will bring you through. Has God brought you through? Has God brought you through anything? Wait on the Lord. Your waiting will be rewarded. God will come through for his people. And so Paul bows his knees to God and he says, Lord, give them inner strength. To overcome the world, to overcome the trials, to overcome the temptations, to overcome, to overcome. Lord, give them strength. And when they get worried, pick them up and set them on eagle's wings and let them know that they can fly like the eagles because God is a very present help in time of trouble. So you bow your knees when you're going through. Bow your knees when you're going through. Fight your battle on your knees and you will win every single time. <laughs> Powerful family prayer. And Dr. Michael would say this, and God be praised forever and ever and ever. Amen.